All right, hopefully background noise isn't going to interfere too much with the narration. Uh, so what this vehicle is, this is a mid-80s Isuzu Trooper, where it's undergoing a smog delete upgrade uh, because the original computer-controlled carburetor um, and the systems that were mandated to be associated with it were a source of a lot of the problems on a vehicle. In fact, it was a source of um, the relatively dismal reputation that these vehicles had in comparison to uh, Toyota and Nissan vehicles of its era in the United States while overseas and in third world countries the Isuzu's uh, had a pretty good reputation and it was primarily because of uh, smog related computer controlled smog related equipment on the vehicle which um, it, ca it caused a lot of problems so with the import tuners a lot of people doing performance upgrades on various vehicles with the older generation troopers, it really becomes necessary to keep one of these things on the road long term. Well, this one has an engine which is newer than the rest of the vehicle, and it upgraded. It it had other upgrades over time. For example, a a advanced catalytic converter, which made it no longer uh, necessary to have a smog pump on there. It would still pass the emissions test um, when the smog pump was long since non-functional. Uh, more recently, the smog pump was physically removed as part of the s somewhat relatively professional installation of the Weber carburetor. Now what happens when you're doing relatively radical ex uh, changes from stock on uh, rare, more uh, less common import motors, and this is speaking from an American standpoint, you, you want to go in a sequence of steps very slowly, very carefully in order to keep the vehicle running. And so the typical setup on something like this would be to go the Weber curb on the intake. Uh, you're disabling, removing a lot of the smog equipment. And then a header exhaust. Now there's only two companies making header kits for these things. Uh, one of which is uh, the Pace Setter head headers which are available from Amazon.com. Well, they come with just shipping paint, so shortly after one of these is running, that paint starts to burn off. The paste setter headings have a fitment for the EGR valve, but it's badly placed, and if you look in the Amazon reviews, you'll find that most of the people are either, either encounter a lot of difficulty in reconnecting the EGR or cannot reconnect it at all. So effectively what happens is you, you end up disconnecting the EGR. Now as part of the Weber carb conversion also the O2 sensor here has, is non-functional. We are slowly and incrementally disengaging the vehicle's onboard computer. The problem is if you totally disengage your original electronics the vehicle would stop running. So the strategy on this is that you disengage one system at a time, test drive the vehicle, make sure that everything is going to work with that, that portion of that system disengaged, and then permanently remove its components. For example, uh, uh, the smog pump, when the smog pump was made non-functional. Now it had to stay hooked up because of the pipe openings and stuff like that. Once the secondary exhaust rail was removed and these bolts were placed in, we could take this a few steps further, such as disconnecting uh, or plugging a lot of the vacuum lines leading to that. Now, when you disconnect vacuum lines, you generally need to plug them up or going to they, they, the vacuum that's created on that from an open line that's not operating a device that had been vacuum operated that extra vacuum is going to affect vehicle performance usually badly um, because what you'll have is a loss of vacuum, it's a, it's a vacuum leak so what happens is initially to get the thing running, to get it out of the mechanic shop there was a lot of improvised capping off of vacuum lines one of the things that will accompany that, especially on the insulation of, a, of the carburetor and this is a very 1930s technology Weber carburetor, uh, late 30s, basically an improvement on late 30s technology that was a common performance upgrade, let's say on Volkswagens and stuff like that. 
we're, we're also disconnecting a lot of the electronic components of the electronic control carburetor because this doesn't have those. In fact, it has a manual choke. So even choke control components uh, were disconnected, although an additional choke cable had been installed, which is this one going into the uh, passenger compartment. Other components, we, we unplug, we see how the vehicle works. Once it works uh, consistently with that component unplugged, then we can physically remove that component. So what I've been doing a little bit more of today is uh, I, I got this little assortment of uh, vacuum caps, basically is what these things are. This is, uh, I got this at Riley Auto Parts, $2.50, not very expensive. I go through finding vacuum lines that have previously been cut and plugged, like, like these and these. These are what the mechanic had done. Um, professional mechanics tend to want to shy away from this. You need to find an import tuner, uh, an improv mechanic, a hot rod guy, a shade tree guy. A regular shop probably isn't going to want to do this. And the shade tree guys, the good news is they're usually a little cheaper. Uh, they're able to think outside the box and get this stuff going. So what happens on this is you, you go through anything that's an open line and you start plugging these and you have to remember where they are optimally you, you want to permanently remove that and put bolts in those but a lot of times that's just not a realistic option and one of the things you have to look out for when power washing the engine is uh, blowing these off so you want them to be relatively tight if you run into a point where they are not tight enough to really stay on with a little bit of finger pressure you simply take the next larger size and put that over the other cap and what that will do is that will compress it a little bit you, you kind of want to avoid having to put hose clamps on those caps but some people do um, the Isuzu factory clamps are kind of a neat little finger pressure spring loaded type of a thing and um, they're used in multiple parts of the vehicle uh, I found them on the fuel filter I'm guessing they're on the fuel pump they're on this radiator overflow. These are really neat little neat little cap assemblies. So you want to keep these. You don't want to throw those away. We don't want to throw those lines away yet. We eventually will. We want to reduce the number of vacuum lines that are used in here. Now, to dress up an engine compartment, we might want to use like let's say steel braided hose or something like that. That that really doesn't give us a performance benefit. Some people might say it provides a little bit of heat resistance maybe maybe not um, the, the the give back on that is that with the regular rubber lines you you get to see if there's any cracking or damage on the steel braided lines that damage can be concealed under the steel braids you won't know it's there until you have a problem and you may not be able to diagnose that problem uh, as time goes on the uh, so smog delete on one of these vehicles is has to be a methodical process where we're disconnecting one system at a time uh, we're looking at how the routing goes and we're trying to take off non-essential components one system at a time by the time we're done with this we would expect this engine compartment to look about like let's say a 1950s vehicle we're not quite going to get back into a 1930s vehicle type of level, but we would expect it to look about like a 1950s vehicle. Because this one has power brakes, it has air conditioning and some other stuff in there that's, that's probably not going to get removed. I'm not going to remove power, things like power steering and air conditioning. Uh, it's, it's never going to be a totally cleaned out engine compartment, but it's going to be much simpler, much easier to diagnose and work on in the future as a long-term vehicle. The other thing is that we're enhancing reliability when we do this. Uh, by going with a really dirt simple ignition system we have something that is more easily repaired in a should hit the fan scenario with more or less universal parts like things like electric fuel pumps, fuel filters, uh, the valves and, and things that would might be part of the carburetor are relative, going to be much more universal than the proprietary factory stuff which would adversely affect reliability and should hit the fan situations not just for like a major disaster but an ongoing age out of the vehicles 
as parts would become less available. For example, the, the fast idle device down there attached to a manifold, other things which eventually are, will, are known to fail. And what we're doing is we're instead of replacing those systems, we're disengaging those systems to the point where they're no longer essential to the running of the vehicle. We do that by replacing them with upgraded components and methodically disengaging a lot of those auxiliary systems which no longer serve a useful purpose, but if they were to fail, they could stop the vehicle. You do this sequentially, you do this one, cut, one system at a time to uh, create what you see here and then improvements on what you'll see here which would involve probably the eventual elimination of some of this componentry in here like like this device and these devices a lot of which were related to the computer control of a carburetor and um, and then of course they also physically get in the way of diagnosing and doing other work in the engine compartment uh, that also leaves us room in the engine compartment for supplementary systems such as a uh, hydrogen generator or uh, uh, or maybe a nitrous oxide system or, or other things which can enhance reliability and performance uh, for this type of uh, series of vehicle upgrades. But we're also reducing some weight in the vehicle and um, you know we can do some things to enhance the appearance also. Uh, another note when we're talking about uh, making the, the engine system in an older vehicle less complex or even a newer vehicle. But newer vehicles, uh, 1996 and newer, are going to have an OBD2 uh, diagnosis system, which is usually worth keeping. But one of the things we're going to do over long term by reducing the amount of junk that's under the hood is we are reducing future labor costs and labor requirements for future work uh, such as let's say a clutch will replacement later on down the road it'll be much easier for a future mechanic to be able to get it get at the engine and be able to move the uh, clutch out of the uh, engine out of the way to get at the clutch when there's less componentry to deal with and less stress on what would need to be reconnected after let's say an engine uh, a rebuild or an engine swap or something like that another advantage to uh, decommissioning a lot of the, uh, the earlier computer control uh, carburetor equipment is that the components that we're putting on are unlikely to fail for the future lifetime of the vehicle. These Weber carbs are built like a tank. That's basically a lifetime carburetor. Headers can be replaced. Uh, I, I, components on a header can be repaired replaced as time goes on simply with bent metal tubing. So a primitive workshop can do repairs and upgrades on headers it's just more difficult to build them from scratch. So the first set of headers on a vehicle are, are going to be factory made by an outfit that makes headers. That's what they'll do. But when you talk about repairing or upgrading those headers later on, those can usually be done by a local fabrication shop.